Hi there, my name is Dan Roswood from Avnet Electronics Marketing. Today, I would like to briefly show you what features exist for tuning your transceivers using an iBert design. In this video, we are going to build on the activities from the last two videos where we generated an iBert design from scratch, as well as set up our hardware and programmed our board. Let's get started. I'm using the same Pico Z7015 SOM from the last video, where we left off with our SOM programmed and running. Let's talk about the various options available to us for tuning. The first thing I like to do is move my tickle console up and out of the way. Sometimes you can catch Vivado while it is updating something. You might not get a command to execute as expected while operating in the serial I.O. link window. Here you can see the commands execute as you click buttons. You can see that we still have our four links, MGT0 being PCIe, MGT1 being SMA, MGT2 being SFP+, and MGT3 being FMC. Next, if you right-click the bar under the Serial I.O. Links section of Vivado, you can see that there are a lot of options. What you see here is the default selection. Let's turn on all the checkboxes from Termination Voltage down to CTLE. We do not need to use CTLE since we have GTP transceivers in the Pico Z7015 SOM. Let me talk about some of the options that are pretty obvious. There is the inject error buttons. These can be used to intentionally mess up an expected pattern. The reason I use this is to ensure that I am in full control of everything. As you can see, we saw the tickle command and we have one error. The tool chain is behaving properly. There is also RxPLL status and TxPLL status. These should always stay locked. If they are not, you have a fundamental issue with your clocking. When troubleshooting or working with a new board, the first thing I like to do is validate that the zinc transceivers are performing properly. We can do this by using a loopback mode. You have four choices. You have near-end PCS, near-end PMA, far-end PMA, and far end PCS. PCS is digital loopback. This shows that the logic is running properly. If this does not work, you need to check your design. PMA is looping through the analog section of the transceiver, however, staying on chip. Far end loopback is essentially the same, except that the data is passed through a partner chip, which only repeats the data back. This is useful if you connect two Pico Z boards together to validate the link integrity. The next set of columns to look at is the RX and TX user clock frequency. As I understand it, it is not so important that these say exactly what you think they should, but are reasonably close and is more important that they match, especially in the case of running a loopback. If you recall, we're running 250 MHz. However, we have 234.424, and all frequencies match. And that goes for the clock 2 frequencies as well. If the TX clock is greatly different than the RX clock, you have an issue. To correct this, generally you can click on the RX reset, or TX reset buttons. This will cause a realignment to any embedded clocks as well as generally can be the first step in getting a no link to change to a link. I tend to use this often to ensure that the configuration changes are not affecting the errors I might be accumulating. Everything I said is also applicable to the TX buttons, except it affects the TX data path. If you are using a Pico Z7030 SOM, you will also have DFE as an option. In our case, it's blank, but that's because a Pico Z7015 does not support DFE due to having GTP transceivers. For a loopback, I would actually suggest not having DFE running anyway. DFE has three modes, equalize, 
LPM, or low power mode, and DFE, decision feedback equalization. Typically, you will use LPM when signals are staying on board. If you have longer cables, you can use DFE, which is a more aggressive, non-linear technique. Equalize also has its place, however the negative to using Equalize is that a linear technique is applied. So, it not only amplifies your signal, but also amplifies your noise, such as reflections and crosstalk. The next thing we can do is try to change the polarity. And that would be these columns here. Typically, I don't need this mostly because we've gone through and validated all of our reference boards. So if you tie a TX positive to an RX positive, as I recommended in the last video, you typically do not have to do this. However, using these checkboxes, you can actually determine if you have an issue by dynamically switching the data line pairings internally inside the zinc. As you can see, if I click this, we immediately lose link and start collecting bit errors. If we turn that back off, you can see it updating in the window, and we immediately stop getting errors. So if we reset that line, zero bit errors, and we start reaccumulating our bits. Please join me in our next video of this series, where I will give you an overview of margin and what to do to get more of it. Here at Avnet, we are committed to accelerating your success through hands-on practical training and design support. Thank you for your time.